Ah. Oh. God. Shit. Ah. Oh. I, uh... I accidentally spilt uh, coffee on our carpet and I have to clean it up because my girlfriend will 100% kill me. Um, I was trying to do a trick where I grabbed it, came it up, and it just ended up going on my pants. So that's where I'm at Monday morning. Anyway, also, yesterday my SDI cable broke for my uh, monitor for the uh, Ursa, and so I'm just eyeballing whether I'm in focus or not. So this whole video, I might not be in focus at all, and I'll never know. Maybe I'll post a blurry uh, video. Anyway, uh, today I want to talk about just my journey as a filmmaker and like how I've found myself into this world and just I just want to be real about some of the challenges and also some of the uh, really fun surprises and why I personally enjoy doing this. Um, so I've like always been into photography. I didn't get my first camera until I was like 13. And uh, it was one of those like janky, like point and shoot little things. And um, I remember, I remember I would like take it every year down in DC and we would go look at the cherry blossoms and um, I, you know, I'd get all these like pictures of like cherry blossoms that were backlit by the sun and silhouetted. And I remember I, I, when I first started doing this, I was like, oh my God, like these are so good. I could like sell them. So I went on this platform, which was really popular at the time called DeviantArt and like started posting all of my, you know, pictures or whatever. I was probably around 15 when I started doing this. I took this break from photography when I went to school. Um, and I had my camera and I would, you know, take pictures here and there. It was still the same point and shoot thing. Uh, but it wasn't until my senior year when my mom got me a Nikon D7200, which I think she had owned before. She gave it to me as a senior gift and uh, I went nuts with it. Um, I didn't know anything about cameras. I didn't know anything about shooting. didn't know any technical knowledge. That was 2017. Uh, but I just started taking pictures of everything. I started going everywhere, taking pictures of, you know, the sidewalk, the birds, the walls, the people. I started trying to film myself. I was in school for acting, so I was, I would go into the studio and I would try to set it up in a way that, like, you know, it looked like I was filming a movie. Um, and it didn't look that way at first. And but I bring her here. And she's never seen anything like it. You know, it's so funny. In the beginning, when you start these things, you're like, oh my God, that is the thing. I'm doing the thing. And then you go back and you're like, oh my God. It's like middle school. Like, we all thought we were awesome in middle school. And then... Coffee break. So for me, what really, like made me realize like, oh my God, I want to do this for real, is my senior year of college, my mom and I took a trip to Montana. And we went out there to run the uh, Yellowstone Half Marathon, which was its own spiritual journey. Uh, good, bad, beautiful, uh, and just <laughs> a lot of pain. But it was a really, uh, probably one of the favorite like nine days of my whole life. And my mom had gotten me this camera for my graduation. And so we both went out and we just spent the next nine, 13 days, I forget how long it was, just taking pictures from sunrise to sunset. And um, I came back from that trip with this perspective of like, wow, like if I could do that every day for the rest of my life, I would be happy. And so the thing for me was like, I had spent four years in school studying acting and I love acting. I still love acting. Um, but the thing about acting for me is like, every time I was, every time I was on stage or doing 
you know, a monologue or working on a show, I'd always like have this obsession with it being real, with it seeming real. And like the thing about photography and film that I think really I connect with on that level is like, it is real. You know, it, 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 there's no performance behind it. It is real. Um, and so anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent. So anyway, I come back from this trip and I have this realization, I'm like, oh my God, I could do this. Uh, and uh, I moved to New York. Uh, I spent that whole summer in Boston. I've been doing a show in Boston. And I, I moved back to New York and uh, I, you know, that summer had started applying to jobs, really had no idea what I was looking for. And I found this job at a marketing department um, for a startup selling sit to stand desks. And I don't didn't know anything about marketing, didn't know anything in the job. All I saw was that photography and videography skills a plus. So I applied and was like, I have this sort of, let me try. Got the job. Um, and that was my first job out of college, first job out of college. And um, uh, through that, I was working with a videographer who was teaching me some basics about editing. And uh, I was taking pictures of like their desks and their offices. And it was really unexciting, but whatever. Um, that company went bust and they decided to close all of their US branches overnight. I was out of a job and uh, that sucked. Um, but scrambling within a week, I'd found another job at another place and I was doing basic marketing. I'd picked up a lot of marketing skills in my four or five months at the last job. My other boss was really good about mentoring me and taught me all these things about marketing, SEO, website maintenance, blah, 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 blah. So really good lesson. So I had, I had picked up some skills for marketing, um, but again, my heart was like, I'm miserable. I hate marketing and I still do. I hate marketing. Um, anyway. Uh, so I got this job at this jewelry e-commerce business and it was marketing, digital marketing. Um, I did a lot of uh, website maintenance stuff, copy editing, uh, but I also started this influencer program for them and that's the part that I really enjoyed. So I was going out and I was like meeting with influencers in person saying, hi, I have this brand, we're trying to blah, 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 grow it. Uh, and I would go and take their pictures and we would, you know, make, we would kind of build like an editorial style for the company. But then I started having influencers reach out to me um, on my Instagram page, separate from work being like, hey, I like your work, I saw you shot, blah, 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 blah. Do you wanna, you know, connect or whatever? So I was doing that. I got invited to New York Fashion Week while I was in New York. Um, that was crazy. And there I met a whole bunch of people, uh, added that to my portfolio and then was like, oh my God, I'm actually doing a thing. Now, I look back at those photos and I'm like, oh, terrible. Anyway, doesn't matter. Somebody liked them, somebody wanted them. Um, and that was good. Uh, so fast forward a little bit to New York and I, at the, I'm, I'm getting close to the end of my, um, getting, getting close to the end of my time in New York uh, the jewelry place was not a great place for me, so I ended up leaving uh, and was just doing influencer pictures, mostly full time, connecting where I could with like brands that would hire me for stuff. And I ended up getting a job at this furniture designer. It was a bit odd. They, they're called Rico Brooklyn, and they hired me to literally just make videos and take pictures of their work. And it was a really, it was a job where I maybe was like 10 hours a week. Um, it was really a hard time. It was like 200, it was like my main source of income. And I was literally making like maybe $200 a week. And if I got an influencer gig, um, I'd get, you know, an extra $50 because I was charging cheap at that time. Cause I didn't, you know, have the repertoire to be like, Hey, a thousand dollars for a shoot here. Um, so I was, I, I worked with them until my very end in New York. And to be honest, New York was a very uh, challenging and traumatic uh, experience for me. Uh, I think poverty is traumatic and uh, not to say that I lived in a sustained period of poverty. I could at any point, you know, have gone back home to my mom and at least would have had a place to stay. Um, but in New York, I lost like 
15, 20 pounds. Um, I was not able to consistently feed myself. I had, you know, basically cut all of my meals to like two meals a day. And they were, you know, in the morning I would eat oatmeal because it was cheap. And at night I would eat sweet potatoes because they were cheap. And that's how I lived. And I lived on $15 a week for food. Um, and then I had to save up for rent. And that was just really, really hard. Um, so while I have good experiences for like development in New York, I think New York helped me accelerate my abilities uh, tenfold. Uh, it also came at a price for me. And that price was, uh, was, is, was trauma that I'm still processing. You know, I'm, I'm in a place now where I'm like making a good amount of money, but I still struggle to pay more than $50 a week for food. Uh, and I'm very, you know, selective about what I'm choosing money on unless I can see it as an investment. And like all of those things were things that New York taught me and um, are, are in part some of the trauma that I'm left with after that experience. So among other things, um, let's see. So fast forward to DC. I was applying like crazy as we were going, we were moving to DC, New York. We were like, gotta get out of this place. Um, so went and found this job at a place called United Way at a nonprofit. And um, I applied to that, ended up getting the job and they hired me as a writer, but I built basically all of my I built, I used my photography and videography skills to build uh, assets into the organization. And, and this was a new role for them. So they were kind of flexible for me being like, okay, here, um, you know, create. And so I, I created uh, through my two and a half years. And I, I just left a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, through my two and a half years there, I built video assets, photography assets uh, to the, tunes of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of media um, and I have been really using that that job as a way to build my portfolio and build my experience while telling really important stories about people in the DC also have my own business I've got my own little LLC and I you know use that as as well I literally had to like stop because the light was getting so bad in the back reset my lights so that it would block the sun. I don't really have a place in my house where it's like sexy to record, so this is it, and I'm sitting on the floor. My life has never gone like this. My journey has never gone like this. And I'm not even saying this from a place where I would, you know, necessarily say that I'm like successful. Um, however, I came out of school with $120,000 in student loan debts. Uh, I had to make right out of the bat $950 a month payments to Sally Mae and some of the worst fucking creditors out there with interest rates of like eight to 10%. Um, and for the longest time was like, is this what my in life is gonna be like? I was going to jobs and you know, they jobs were telling me I needed to be unpaid as an intern first before I can make money. And I'm like, well, how does that make any sense? So for me, the most secure way to make sure that I'm never in a place where I'm, you know, having to survive on $15 a, a week for food is to invest in myself. And um, it, it, it was the riskiest thing for me to do at the time. It felt like that, um, but it's allowed me to do what I want to do uh, in, in a way that um, can make sure that I'm never in that place again. So I say all this because there's a lot of different versions of success out there that you might have, um, and a lot of them might not be yours. Uh, a lot of people will imprint or put their own versions of your success on you. Honor what you want to do, honor what feels good to you, and know that you can um, you can be successful at that. You can achieve that. Uh, so I pass that on to you. Uh, and I just wanted to share and take a moment to reflect and maybe I'll post this, maybe I won't. Um, but I wanna create more of like a community here. I don't really know how to do that, um, but I'm working on it. So uh, comment if, you know, 
you have a journey or if you have a story to tell uh, about, you know, how you've come into this business or any craft or any, you know, job that you're in now, uh, comment, share, and uh, let's get talking. So anyway, if you haven't, you know, already and you're interested in this kind of content, uh, please subscribe, give a like if this was useful or interesting or anything like that. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right, guys, take care.